welcome to today's episode of Coffee Break. And today my special guest is John from Juniper Films. And we have something in common in that we are great fans of Dr Marilyn Meyer. So, John, here's some footage of a concert that I filmed a few years ago now in Camden featuring Dr Marilyn Meyer. Okay, John, can you tell us how did you come to meet Marilyn? Uh, I met Marilyn in Sydney and we were um, making a series for SBS TV which ultimately went international, worldwide on Discovery. And one of the stories was uh, on Marilyn when she visited Tonga and gave a command performance, a command performance for the King of Tonga and all the royal family. And she played um, Rachmaninoff uh, very beautifully. And they don't have a concert hall in Tonga, so it was a huge football stadium, an indoor basketball stadium attached to a football stadium. And actually the acoustics were quite good. But Marilyn was beautifully uh, dressed in a great uh, evening gown. And she gave this wonderful performance, and the king was extraordinarily impressed. They were very musical, the Tongan royal family. And then subsequently, uh, she received a medal of Tonga for her creative works as a Tongan. But she's a very fine musician and a fine woman. And then we also um, made a story around her Tongan connection. Her mother was Tongan. Her father um, is of German extraction, and her mother and her grandfather, um, the grandfather lived in Tonga and Marilyn was very close to him. So we made a story about her visiting her grandfather, and then we had the inspired thought of taking Marilyn out to a, an island, a tropical island. But the catch was getting a piano <laughs> for her out to the island. So we sort of preempted um, the film Piano by taking a piano out on a barge across <laughs> the lagoon and to this small and very beautiful island. And the piano wasn't up to much, but Marilyn <laughs> very resourcefully played on it and uh, did some Chopin pieces at this small resort. But the piano went on the barge across the water, landed up <laughs> on this tropical island on a beach and Marilyn gave a wonderful performance. Okay, now I've seen some footage. When I first met Herman, he showed me some footage from that because he's so proud. He's just such, he has worked so hard to make sure that she's properly acknowledged. And that image of the piano on the barge will always stick in my head because it's so extraordinary. You don't expect to see a grand piano on a barge out in the ocean. It's extraordinary stuff. A small barge bearing a grand piano to a palm-fringed island in the South Pacific is an adventure beyond the wildest dreams of a pianist. Vusika Haimuli is an old Tongan gentleman. He's on his way to the airport to meet his granddaughter, the young concert pianist Marilyn Meyer. It's always very, very special to come home to Tonga. 
It's always wonderful to see my grandfather. As I'm the eldest grandchild, he's very proud of me, of what I do, and uh, I think I, I hold a very special and close place in his heart. This country is in my blood, and a very large part of the way I am, the way I see things and the way I feel about things. And for me, he's very much the symbol of Tonga. You got good. My big girl. I love bringing my music back to Tonga, but more than anything, Tonga means family. My grandfather's house is full of family. That means our extended family. It's a house outside of time where we can all be like children again. And the youngest grandchild, his name's Nicholas, and everyone spoils him. It's lovely to see him growing up now in that house where my mother spent her childhood, in which now her sister and family live caring for, for Grandpa. Hi, B. Hi, B. <laughs> there are certainly not very many grand pianos in the South Pacific, let alone in the Kingdom of Tonga. But the one that I perform on belongs to the Crown Prince, and as he's the Minister of Foreign Affairs, he organises a defence force to move it about 12 huge, beautiful-looking guys. <laughs> My first performance will be tonight at the Atali Stadium. I'm playing the Shostakovich Second Piano Concerto with the SBS Youth Orchestra. Orchestras are certainly a rare species here in the Kingdom of Tonga, and a visit from such a huge 80-piece Western-style orchestra is a historic event. To get them all here together with all their instruments was certainly a monumental undertaking. Can you hear how my check is here? Of course, Grandpa will be here at the concert, and so will the Crown Prince, who loves music and also plays the piano. Let's go, Matthew. It's always a special thrill to play with an orchestra, sitting there in the middle of all that, that wonderful orchestral sound. I don't fear the audience, but I think the memory slips that can happen when you play with an orchestra are more dangerous than if you are just playing by yourself. And it certainly takes some pretty fancy footwork to recover from them. <laughs> I didn't meet Marilyn first, I met Herman. It was about 2006 and I was making coffee break shows and I was filming in Ryleston. I loved going to Ryleston. There's a place called Number 47 and it's managed by Ginny Hanmi. And I rang up Ginny and I said, I'm coming to Ryleston. Um, have you got any artwork on the wall that I can film? And she said, yes, I've got a wonderful artist called Ian Webb. But anyway, I got a phone call from Herman. He was watching Coffee Break and there was his old mate Ian Webb. They were best friends at school. They were each other's groomsmen and they'd lost contact. So through Coffee Break, they were reunited. And then Herman told me about Marilyn and her music. 
and Marilyn's music has featured regularly on Coffee Break, almost right from the very first episode. So that's how I met them. And yesterday there was a concert, because they've hit bad times. Now Marilyn isn't very well, and her friends organised a benefit concert for her because the medical expenses are so high and they wanted to help. Everybody wants to help. So here's a little snippet from yesterday's concert. fortunate enough also to go to the concert and it was a wonderful occasion uh, it was in the Knox Chapel um, the no of Knox School on the North Shore of Sydney and again the acoustics were very fine and they had a wonderful collection of artists and some of them were very very young and it was all classical and it was very very inspirational perhaps even more so because these people had donated their time and their talent to um, doing this benefit concert for Marilyn. And it's something that deserves a, a wider audience and it's great that it's on coffee break. 
Yes, I've invited the artists to come on Coffee Break and talk about their passion for their music. So, yeah, you'll have to keep watching Coffee Break to see the concert. And some of them are so young and so amazingly talented and to see these tiny kids uh, playing this great grand piano, uh, it really is just a wonderful experience and I'm sure anybody who's interested in music and even those who are not especially into classical music can't help but be excited by it. <laughs> Hello, my name's Jan Wood and you're watching Coffee Break. And my special guest today is John Trist. And our special topic is Dr. Marilyn Meyer. Now, Marilyn apparently was a child prodigy. And Herman told me the story. She was only a little bit bigger than a toddler and he bought her a toy piano. And this little tiny girl sat down and played it. You know, it wasn't clonk, 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 clonk. She actually played music. And from then on, the family was very passionate about um, doing everything to help Marilyn's musical career. Now, you've made some documentaries on Marilyn, haven't you? Well, it's only one that we've made, but it's it, this particular one is something that's very close to our heart. Uh, we've made many, many films throughout the Pacific, and Juniper, uh, though I say it myself, is very well known in the Pacific, particularly in Tonga and, and uh, Fiji, Samoa, Vanuatu, because we film there very regularly over many years. And Marilyn's story was just one of those things that took your heart and and um, Jan's going to show some clips of it on, on Coffee Break. Um, the story itself is, is a family one. Grandpa sang in the same choir as the King and they once sang together in Australia. It must have been about 50 years ago. They sang in the Sydney Town Hall and he still talks about that time. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Say B. Do you? Yeah. You enjoy? Yeah. Thank you for coming, Grandpa. I love you. I really couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the grand piano floating on the water. 
All I could think was that if there were one large wave, I'd have to swap my concert gown for a wetsuit and flippers and give a concert for the mermaids and the fish. <laughs> I know the flippers would make pedalling a bit, a bit of a problem. Tonight I'll be playing some music by Chopin, who I think is my favourite composer. I studied in America for seven years with Bela Shiki, who I think is one of the world's best Chopin pianists. And his musical heritage goes back to some of the greatest artists of our time, and I feel very, very fortunate to have studied with someone of his calibre. Juniper Films has been filming for 40 years and the Pacific is, is our particular speciality area. We have made many, many stories in the Pacific, something like 60. Um, wow. Two big series uh, for SBS television. One was called Pacifica, Tales from the South Seas uh, with a companion book. And then there was Oceania and both of these uh, series played on SBS TV, but they were also on Discovery, uh, the Travel Channel, uh, National Geographic, to name but a few. So they had great international exposure. I can't bear to think of a time when he won't be here to come home to. Smile. I'll be back to play for you again, Grandpa. So, John, you must have miles of footage. We have a huge amount of footage and, of course, all the stories that we've ever filmed. And we've now set up our own website and we sell um, a number of the stories in DVD format. And also the website gives a good display of the sort of things that we've made over the years. I know, because the world has changed so dramatically in the last 40 years.